funny because I believe you should listen to women. You should always believe women. So I asked my wife mm. what I should do. And she was like, first of all, if, if it's coming from an unnamed source, because Gabrielle Union has not made any statement to this day about any of these allegations publicly. Yeah. So have she's you spoken to her. I, I have not. I have reached out, but I have not heard anything. Hey guys, we're going to be talking to you guys um, around the recent um, situation with Terry Crews and Gabrielle Union. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit around um, how black men seem to um, be unsupportive um, in times of need of the black women. Um, so if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for the notifications of the uploads, baby. And for those of you who are mineral gang, make sure you got your attire, you know. I don't know if it all you know. Listen, dear Claudins, you understand? Um, if you're, you know, a mineral gang, you understand? Yeah, then you ain't got the minerals, baby. Are you mad or you're mad or you're lean? A gege. If you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, Chile, come out. So, um, yeah, so recently, obviously, just a few, I believe, I believe it was last week or so, um, there was a situation with, uh, a situation where Terry Crews made a statement in regards to um, Gabrielle Union's um, release from AGT. Um, and so I kind of had a look into it and just wanted to kind of see what was going on behind the scenes. And when I started going down a rabbit hole, I started to realise that obviously, um, previously before uh, Terry Crews, before Gabrielle Union, Nick Cannon was in there. And so I watched a few of the interviews and I realised that Nick Cannon also had alleged that, you know, AGT um, also was, um, the institution of it basically was um, restricting um, the progress of black people. I don't want to say black people, ethnic people across the board as well. Decade, you kind of see these things and you're like, it's a giant machine. But if you really take the time to step back, you'll be like, yo, there's some things that are going on that are truly not fair or, or should be viewed uh, proper to the public on the way a lot of the contestants are handled, the way a lot of the judges are handled. And I just believe, again, I always go like, it's an institutional issue, you know what I mean, no way. Well, we, we, but we can be specific and say black people um, in the AGT firm. So whether, it's, whether it was contestants, whether it was Gabri uh, whether it was the person themselves, such as Gabrielle Union, and apparently she had, uh, there was an alleged, uh, uh, allegation that, that obviously, um, you know, they, they were saying about her hair being too hard, too hard um, to kind of style and that it's too black. Um, some of the stuff that we, we hear on a regular basis. Um, so, you know, there was those similar allegations that Nick Cannon had, similarly enough. The same thing then gets perpetrated with Gabrielle Union, who's there and has the same experience. Now, when Terry Crews comes in, okay, Terry Crews is um, sitting on a panel, I don't know what panel it was for, and they ask him around the situation with the AGT. Now, he clearly comes and says, obviously, I... Um, have an experience that I can't speak on sexism, but I personally haven't experienced any racism. Da, 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 da. You know, they, they've treated us well, uh, did a kind of massa kind of talk, right? And I really like Terry Crews. Here's my um, issue with the Terry Crews situation. He didn't have to make a statement. Um, he didn't have to open his mouth and say anything. You know, he could have just said, listen, I, I can't comment upon that, you know, at the moment. I can't comment upon that, you know, and there's a conflict of interest. I work with things. So I can't comment upon that. Right. Um, but he decided to talk. Just remember that when his situation with the Me Too, where he was sexually assaulted, black women stood up for him. I tell you who didn't stand up for him. Black men. So deep, I, I just want you to deep this because this is something that has really begun at the cotton field. Right. This wasn't this wasn't in Africa. This is what the cotton field. This is when we were in slavery, when we were slaves and, at, you know, the trade, Atlantic, Atlantic trade, um, when we were slaves, you know, when the Dutch came over, when the Portuguese came over, took us from our native land, brought us over to where we were, and then intentionally installed fear through, you know, rape, mutilation, um, you know, intentionally breeding um, our women and, you know, intentionally, uh, you know, causing the black men to, to, to degrade black women during the slave trade, right? And all of that has filtered through and trickled through right to the day and age where we now have institutional racism. Right. Where they set up a, pa a structure, a hierarchy um, where um, based on your skin tone, you get treated a certain way. 
right? And this is where colorism comes in as well. And I won't go too deep on it because I'll read that for another section of um, conversation. But colorism is based upon this hierarchy where you're given a certain, you're discriminated against by your own race based upon the color of you, the color you are, right? But it also feeds back into the white structure or white supremacy structure where they give more tokens, more due, more power, more um, responsibility, more authority to the lighter colored individual. And it started on the plantation field. Yeah, this is, didn't start with us in Africa. This started with us on the plantation field. Do you understand? When you look at any, uh, where the white supremacy comes in, whether it be America, whether it be the British Empire, when they went to India, the same caste system gets set up. You see around the Asian markets, Pakistan and them, they have the same caste system and they have the same kind of hatred, um, light skin against dark skin, and have a caste system because when the supremacists came in, this is what they used to separate us. It is a devilish ploy, a demonic ploy. Um, which, um, you know, has been used to separate us, to divide and to conquer, right? So now fast forward to this day and age where we've got Terry Crews, okay, um, practically doing what um, gets done on the cotton field, which is turn against the black women. He didn't have to say anything. Terry Crews could have just kept his mouth shut. You understand? You didn't have to make a statement. Um, so, you know, the, the, the situation... <clears throat> Where, obviously now, like I said, Terry Crews had his situation where he was sexually assaulted. Um, and Gary O'Neill was one of those women that rode out for him. Um, and I heard, I think, one of the interviews by Charlemagne saying, you know, you know, when you ride out for someone, you don't expect the same to come back. And I'm like, no, no, it's not in the matter of expecting the same to come back. We are black. We are in the melting pot where we are the minority. Yeah? Not only that, Terry Crews hadn't even spoken to Gabrielle Union. This is what frustrates me. You see, this statement has got every sign of it that you shouldn't open your mouth at all. Yeah. So have she's, you spoken to her? I, I have not. I have reached out, but I have not heard anything. Yeah. And that you're doing more damage to the black female. And it's actually something that happens quite a bit where the black males don't stand up for black women. And I'm tired of it, to be honest. I've, I've told you this, guys, really, when I did my last video with the Lorenzo thing. I said, black men don't stand up for black women. Yeah, and it's not everybody. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about where it matters the most, right? Um, when it's your sister and it's your mum, we black men are oh my god. When it's when it's the, the girl down the road, we don't give to chalet. Yeah, but there's a poem that I remember in school where it says, you know, um, where it talks about uh, in Africa where it's like it's not my. It's, the person was knock. There was. Um, captors coming to, to knock on people's door to collect them and take them away, right? And the guy was saying, well, it's not my door, it's not my door, it's not my door, so I'm fine, I'm not going to intervene. Till one day, it was his door. You see, when you think of yourself as an individual, when there's a collective issue, you're co they're coming for your door. You see, where Terry Crews might think that it's only, I have to think of the bag, I have to think about myself, it's coming to your door. Do you understand? I had a situation, I remember... Um, where it was at work or whatever and um, there was a situation where a brother you know um, was told that his name was too street and too was too basically in a sense was too black you know what I'm saying it was too ghetto you understand and I said that's your name brother you understand that's your name so for the person to say that's too street what are they hinting at here do you understand and I said you gotta you gotta, you gotta, you gotta say something bro like, and he was like, no, I don't want to rock the boat. And I was like, like, brother, if it's not you, they're coming to me. And let me tell you something, when it comes to me, I'm going to fight, so I don't really mind. But I'm saying that other people out here who can't say that. And I said, at what point do they stop? Okay, they start with your name. Okay, now your hairstyle. Okay, they said, da 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 Do you know what I mean? So you have to think of it as, you may think, oh, I don't want to rock the boat. But you rock, not rocking the boat means someone else's boat get rocked later on. Uh, do you know what I mean? And, you're, and they're going to come round to you anyway. So... You know, when, uh, when I was looking at this, this situation, I, I was distraught. Um, and I think at one point, Terry Crews says, you know, um, Gabrielle Union herself hasn't made a statement. But Gabrielle Union tweeted and said, obviously, you know what? Like, we weren't going to make any statements until the thing, you know, until the investigation was done. So then why, Terry Crews, did you speak at all? Like, why did you open your mouth at all then? Uh, you know, you went to send, you asked your wife what you should say. And actually, there was a situation, I remember, um, I watched another video where he was talking to his, uh, talking about his, his particular situation. And they were doing an interview between himself and the wife. And I, I was just shocked. 
Did you have any reservations about him going public with this? He didn't tell me. No. I was in the recording studio, and I'd come home at 9 o'clock at night, and he goes, Honey, have you seen my Twitter? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, was well. like I was like, what did you do? He's like, look, he shows me the tweet uh, feed. I was like, oh, you done started some mess now, T-Money. Yeah. I did have a brief moment of, are we leaving L.A.? Yeah. Yeah. Retaliation is real. Yep. You know how many women who spoke up and said, this guy touched me, and immediately, or two weeks later, they were all of a sudden mysteriously fired? I mean, this, this, this happened. I was totally prepared, and I told my wife, and I said, you know, this may be it. And he just tweeted about the sexual assault, even though he hadn't spoken to his wife about he was going to release information into the public. So evidently, though you spoke to your wife, I don't think you consulted your wife. Your wife ain't got nothing to do. Don't bring her in just to get her dragged. You've done something, Terry. You haven't defended, you know, your own peoples here by covering them, by saying nothing. You didn't have to say anything. You didn't have to say anything. You know what I'm saying? I also understand that this is a plantation field and that there is another side of things, which is that if he hadn't said something, could there have been something that was going to happen to him? Potentially, because when you went with Me Too and said what you were saying about your situation, that particularly probably blacklisted you, right? But at the same time, there's responsibility. If you want us to back you, you've also got to be ready to back us. Now, someone might say he doesn't have to. No, no, no. But look, in the situation here, you don't have to say anything. That would have been backing us. And then when the situation comes, then you can open your mouth and say what you need to say. But by you literally finished her, her point. And, and, and destroyed her in the public eye by saying, I can't speak on sexism, but in terms of racism, so you're saying, in terms of racism, I don't believe what she said because I've experienced this. When well, you have to say that. When previously before then, another male had been there, a black male who had stated there had been problems. So the show is... Um, it is, is there a toxic atmosphere? First of all, I can't speak for sexism because I'm not a woman, but I can't speak on behalf of any racism comments that was never my experience on America's Got Talent. Where you going, Terry? But this is what I'm saying about the mentality of a lot of black men. It is at the Terry Crews stage. When they are a victim, they want to be supported and it will be black women who start off the race first to defend us. But when it comes the other way around, it'll be black men last. In fact, there'll be black men pointing the finger saying, you did something to get yourself in the situation. Do you see it? This is the plantation mindset. The plantation mindset that gets you into tr this into the situation. Terry Crews, but it gets to that place and again, it's an institutional thing, so I'm not blaming him. We get excited about the occupation. We get excited to work for the man and we gonna defend the man because he gave me a job. Um, and I ain't see nothing becomes that, that, that thing is like, it don't matter what you saw because I was one of those people, I stood firmly by him when, you know, my former agent accosted him. So I guess I just want to end at this point, which is, you know, um, again, just to reiterate that, you know, Terry Crews hadn't, didn't, they asked the question, have you spoke to Gabby? He said he hadn't spoke to Gabby. And for me, that, that just sums up the statement that he made in general. You haven't spoken to the individual. You haven't found out from their mouth what happened. Why speak? You know? Um, and this is, this is, this is, a, this is a, the situation where we need to deal with, um, with, you know, some kind of, do, some due diligence. And also as well, just for respect, and also as well, understand the, the melting pot that you're in. You know, like a black woman's come forward to say that this is happening to her. And it's like black women are the bottom of the totem pole. Like they are the bottom of this hierarchy, hierarchy pole, right? Just like in slavery times. And we're not helping, we're not backing them. What, because we've got a little bit of a leash more than them. Come on, man. Let's do better. Let's do better. Um, and and let's, let's thrive to support one another. Because when my time comes, I want them to support me. Uh, I want them to support me, I want them to back them. If my time comes, I want them to back me. It will be a black woman that supports me. That is why I say I love black women. And I can't date anyone else. Because what I've seen from them in terms of backing me, fam, it hasn't been black males opening doors for me. It hasn't been black males opening this door for me. It's been black women who've opened doors for me. Whenever I'm, when I do my hosting, when I do my gigs, when I do my, you know, um, like do birthday parties and stuff like that and all this kind of stuff it's been black women who've always reached out to me not black males black males hardly ever open a door for me do you understand and that's when i clocked it and i realized it it is the power of a black woman that has supported you in everything that you do even up to this day 
And for me not to support them when they're going through their trials and tribulation is to be disrespectful and to turn my back on them and, and, and to show a contempt and an evil and a self-hatred and, and a self-preservation of self, which will definitely come back to me and bite me in the ass because there'll be a day I need them. Do you get it? So yeah, guys, uh, more love. Appreciate you. Um, stay locked, stay loaded. And yeah, we'll talk some more. Appreciate you.